The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Wednesday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. I trust that you are fine this morning. Well, it's been raining, and so you know what to do for the children. Keep them warm. If you have to drop them over at school yourself and hand them over to the teacher, make sure you do that. If you have to let somebody do that, make sure it's a trusted person who does that. Because recently we had eight children in Tamale, some parts in Tamale, uh, not specifically in the capital, but some place in Tamale. Eight children gruesomely suspected or murdered, and their bodies have been found. And lately we have also been seeing a lot of posts by people suggesting that there are missing children here, missing children there. So you want to take very good care of your children, keep an eye on them. They are the future of the country. They are your blessing and um, they are your treasure. You need to take care of them. Don't just leave your children out there and, and no, think that everything is okay. Don't leave your children out there because you think everything is fine. You have to keep an eye on your children. You have to care for them. And today that it has rained, you need to take them to school yourself if you can. If you can't get somebody you trust, keep them warm and drive safe. The roads are slippery and <laughs> the road markings aren't there in many of the instances. Um, traffic lights aren't working in many instances. Street lights aren't working in many instances. Road signs aren't working in many instances. And um, you need to be very, very careful while you're on the road. And that's why we'll further the conversation that we had yesterday here on Johnny's Bites. Today we'll have it on Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. We'll give a right of reply to the National Road Safety Authority. Because yesterday we got a call from the board chairman of the National Road Safety Authority. He says, well, Mr. Hughes, I may be a person of interest to you. And, well, interestingly, he's not the only board member who contacted us. There are other board members who also contacted us. And they want to speak up. So we will hear them speak up. And um, we will go to the website and check out what's on their website and check the law that establishes them and then see if the questions we asked were misplaced or not. So Mr. Jermaine Nkrumah, Board Chairman National Road Safety Authority will be here. And uh, we will have a question whether the authority is helpless or not. And that conversation will happen at 8 a.m. sharp. You have to tune in to 3FM 92.7. You have been asking the questions. Now we're bringing a resource person. Maybe we'll activate the phone lines for you to have a chance. And then we can all ask the questions together. Now, there is a strike ongoing. But first, we will go to... The Ebri area. There's a light of street light issue, right? And maybe Mr. to welcome Mr. Jermaine. Listen to the gentleman. Listen to him tell his own story. Listen to him. This has been a situation for a very long time. But I tell you, if there's any cabinet meeting or cabinet retreat or there is any important meeting that involves other presidents from the continent or the African continent. It will be held here. And I'm telling you that the fourth night or a night before the meeting, this whole stretch will have light. The street light will start working, Johnny. It's so sad. I apply this road every day. Every day. And sometimes you see cars, you know, falling off the road into the gutter, hitting the, the, the rock. Most often, people who haven't applied this road before will always get involved in accidents. Johnny, this is so sad. And it is no other place than Pediasa Lodge, where our former president lives. I mean, President Four. He lives right at the top there. Three FM. And we all know Pediasa Lodge. So see, the whole place is dark. 
You are descending. You are descending from a hill. You have applied this road before. You be the most, you know. <laughs> it's, it's serious. It's serious. Johnny, this is serious. Three FM ninety two point seven. Anytime I'm passing daytime, I see sometimes you see people working on the light as if they are working, and you approach them. Oh, are you? from the uh, you know highways authority or something like that sometimes they get pissed off that they are doing their job Rola, uh, 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 Three FM. this is sad the whole street from pediatric lodge all the way to Ayimensa and anyone who is watching this who know what I'm talking about. Anyone who applies this road in the night knows what I'm talking about. This is sad, Johnny. Yeah, some of us, we have done our best. We have spoken to who we have to. Three FM, but I know it's your big platform. Johnny's Bite. With your big platform, Johnny's Bite. It will get to the authorities. Suddenly, my big platform, Johnny's Bite, by the grace of God, the authorities watch every morning, including those who send people to come and attack as they watch. Now, this is just one part of Greater Accra region and is leading to the presidential palace, in Krumer's vision of a presidential palace on the hill, Pediasi. Uh, lodge where we go to have re, um, re, uh, what do you call it retreats and all of that. President Kufo still lives there. I know. I know that he lives there. When you get there and you ask around, they'll tell you former presidents of Mampeni that are not here. There are a lot of big people who have gone to acquire lands on the hills and they live there. Some are even building atop the rock and endangering lives there. But it's okay. So common street lights, common street lights. Oh. Meanwhile, every single purchase of electricity credits that we buy in this country, you have one percent going to street lights. Every single purchase of electricity in this country, one percent of that money is deducted for street lights. So who they chop that money? That money where then they collect from in a pocket, who they chop on now? Where is that money? Because this money, if you buy ECG credit or if you use postpaid meter, when your bill is presented to you, 1% of whatever you pay is for street lighting. And the streets are dark. And people are dying. And they are just counted as statistics. Why? Why do we do that to ourselves? Why are we so wicked? And when you speak up, everybody says, oh, it's not my job. It's this people's job. We are only supposed to coordinate. It's not our job. We are only supposed to supervise. It's not our job. If it's not your job, leave there and go home. Eh? So we can get somebody who can do the job. It's not our job. We, we are only an authority. It's not our job. We are only a commission. It's not our job. We are only a department. It's not our job. It's not... So whose job is it? The president's job. Everybody in this country says it is not my job. Yet they wake up, take their bath, go to work, tell their people that they are going to work, come back, the month ends, they take salaries and go to God to go and give 10% as tight and they say, but they do not do the work that they are supposed to do. And the way you complain, they will go and find a few street lights and fix somewhere, call the media along, and then go and show it and come and tell you that eh, when you complain about the street lights and we fix the street lights, you didn't say that we have fixed the street. You have not fixed focal. You haven't fixed focal. The absence of street lights is also a security and safety issue. The malfunctioning uh, uh, traffic lights is a safety and security issue. The absence of road markings is a safety and security issue. The absence of road signs is a safety and security issue. So national security doesn't care. 
if they are not harassing people and picking them up in Rambo style and, and putting them in holes and telling them that I work at national security and beating people up, then, then, then they are not national security. But this is national security's job. The Ministry of Roads and Highways, they are only interested in pothole patching because they are able to show those to the world and tell people that, oh, we have patched roads, we have constructed X number of roads, we have done, they told us we're going to do concrete roads, we are still doing asphalt roads, and they expect us to clap. <laughs> this is Minister of Interior's job, because internal security is on his laps. So if internal if can you imagine if somebody gets mugged on that road? Even if somebody has a camera to shoot, how would you identify the individual? You only see a silhouette. We have multi street cameras all over the place, which is good. It helps in the fight, fighting against crime and, and, and everything. But when there are no street lights, how do you propose that the, the images will be seen and people will be picked up? Can we apply a little wisdom to some of the things that we do, the common things that are supposed to be done? Can we apply just a little wisdom, just a little small one? Because we are endangering lives, we are killing people. People are dying. People are dying. How many more should die before we wake up to know that the basic things, basic things, basic things, street light, basic, street, basic things. Why? And then when they finish, they say, call me honorable, call me honorable. You are no honorable. You are not honorable. You are not honorable, the least. You are not. All those who work in the departments and agencies that are supposed to ensure that we have streetlights who have not done that, shame on you this morning. Bow down your head in shame. Bow down your head in shame. You are a civil servant. The politician is not releasing money for the lies to be procured or for photo cell to come or you are not getting the right hands to come and help you to do it. You are quiet because when you speak about it, you will be transferred or whatever will happen to you and you are not writing a report that reflects the truth. You are massaging the egos of the politicians. Shame on you. You are part of the problem. You are a politician, and you know that you have not released monies, and you know that the photo cells are not in, and you know that the damaged lights have not been fixed, but you go about lying to the people and intimidating civil servants not to speak up. Shame on you. You are a citizen of the republic. You live in a place like this, and the street lights are not working. The traffic lights are not working. People die there every day. You complain about, go to Ablikuma. People die there every day. That's Awoshi Ablikuma. People die there almost every day. The median is overgrown, etc. You don't talk about it. But because of your party, when they talk about it, they say everything is okay. Shame on you. Shame on you. You, you, shame on you. Bow down your head in shame. Today, Klosak is on strike. And why are they on a nationwide strike? And if you don't know, that's the civil and local uh, government staff. They are on strike. This strike is in consonance with a letter dated uh, number BA slash 15 slash volume uh, 2, dated 21st of June 2024, indicating our intention to proceed on nationwide strike if the new salary structure for the staff of the civil service and the local government service is not implemented. We hereby declare a nationwide strike with effect from Wednesday, 3rd July, 2023. All staff of the civil service and local government service should stay away from work until further notice. Similarly, all Clossack secretaries and offices are to be shut down. Kindly take note and comply accordingly. Isaac Bampo Ado, executive secretary, and is distributed across the country. The government went into a negotiation with Clossack in 2022. In 2022, all civil servants, all local government staff in this country, right, they went into an agreement with government in 2022 about their salaries. The National Labor Commission is aware. Those decisions that were taken were supposed to have taken effect in 2023. That's the first, from the 1st of January 2023. It has been 18 months, no show. 18 months, no show. 
And I'm saying the National Labor Commission was aware because each time you find any of these labor unions go on strike and they start demanding for what is theirs, the National Labor Commission will come and ask the striking unions to go back to work instead of telling the government to fulfill, specifically perform, its portion of the deal. Equity. They have to specifically perform their portion of the deal. But they are not specifically performing. Rather, they would ask the, the party that feels aggrieved and feels cheated and feels ill-treated to go back. If they don't go back, then they start applying sanctions. 18 months. The cost of living is so high. Petrol is up. Diesel is up. LPG is up. Kerosene is up. Cement is up, water is up, electricity is up. Salary is down. And yet, when you talk about it, they tell you that, oh, inflation has dropped from 50-something to 23. When I get to Kaneshi Market and I want to buy intos or tomatoes or amo, do I tell the woman that, Madam, give me tomatoes, 23%? Do, I, do we do that in our markets? Or do I tell the woman that tomatoes have dropped from X, so sell this to me? We are so disingenuous. So, so, so disingenuous. And you, sometimes you see people that you hate to respected eh? on Facebook and other places, espousing some of these ideas. And you say, ah, why is this man embarrassing himself like Why is this woman embarrassing herself like that? What happened? 18 months, they have not been paid. Now, the other leg of the conversation that they didn't put into in this thing is the grabbing of the SNIT hotels. They say, we want you to keep your hands off. And I had Nayele Adefio Setre here, right in front of me where I'm standing. She stood in front of me. She said, if government doesn't stop, we, Labor, will do what we know how to do best. And I'm sure that they are showing government. So today, don't be surprised when you go looking for some service from, uh, you know, within the ministry's area and you do not get it. Don't be surprised. Because Klosak is on strike. And I'm waiting to hear what the National Labor Commission will say this time around. 18 months is no joke. 18 months is the same duration that we were told that Ghana will be transformed. Do you remember that? I will transform Ghana in 18 months. 18 months is enough to transform. If 18 months is enough to transform a whole country, then 18 months should be enough to pay the people. Within the period, people have collected their allowances. Within the period, people have collected their per diems. Within the period, people have traveled. Within the period, people may have gotten scholarship meant for poor students, and they, are, they may be rich within the same period. So why can't we give the poor civil servant what is due them, what we agreed? Because they asked for more. And we said, we can't pay for more. We can pay for this much. And then they said, okay, don't worry. We are still, we are all together. We are in it together, so we will take it. Now, after 18 months, you have not given them their money. How do you expect that they stay? Anyway, now there's a Kokonsa police report. And take me to the signatories first. So we know what happened, COP, Alex Mensah, Superintendent JB, Superintendent Asari, Chief Bugri Nabu of the NPP. And you remember Chief Bugri Nabu, very interesting character. Once upon a time, he said he had had an accident. They brought the accident vehicle to uh, the campaign grounds. He came in a wheelchair. That was when he was recontested for the <laughs> chairmanship. <laughs> oh, Charlie, this country, pa. But this is the report. They had gone into a concern meeting to kick out IGP Dampari. And in that meeting, they also said that Dampari was not helping in issues to make sure that the MPP breaks the eight. That he was against the party and that they needed a party man. Who was this party man they were talking about? COP Alex Mensah, who is now on retirement. But at the time that he appeared before the committee, he was not on retirement. This report that you see, has been signed by all the people except lawyer Atachia, who is a co-chair of the committee. So Honorable James Agaga, who is a vice chairman, is there. Uh, Honorable Patrick Buama is an MPP MP for Kankwe Central. He signed. 
Miss Janet Frimpong is a clerk a special committee. You have Honorable Ophelia uh, Mensa Hayford, is a member, MPP. She signed. You have Honorable Eric Opoku, NDC. He signed. You have Honorable Peter uh, Tobu, uh, member, NDC. He signed. It is only lawyer Tachian who has not signed. Now, these members of parliament even had cause at some point to report lawyer Tachian to the speaker, according to the reports that we know from parliament that he at some point abandoned the committee. In fact, the committee used the word that he fled. He left. And we all watch the proceedings. In the proceedings, COP Alex Spencer was asked whether he's an MPP member or not. He said, well, he was born into the UP tradition, and that is what it has been. In fact, at that sitting, lawyer Tatcha raised an objection and said, oh, no, that the man should not answer because it will create problems for him. James Agaga joined, Patrick Obama joined, all of them, you know, blah, blah, blah. That question was not answered. But when COP Alex Benson left that, that meeting, he went to speak with a private media house and mentioned that, oh, I've always been MPP. I've been a card bearing member of the MPP while he was a policeman. And he said, I have sponsored projects. Later, we would see him contesting for the uh, George Seusu seat, what's it called, Bekwai seat. And then he lost. Will he go again? I don't know. Time will tell. But that has been the fact of the issues. So now, is it surprising that lawyer Atachia did not sign or is refusing to sign the report? And COP Alex Spencer said he will only speak to a report that lawyer Atachia has signed. Has he been speaking to him? I don't know. What is the relationship? I don't know. But does lawyer Atachia refusing to sign this report create a certain bad precedence. We're going forward. We will have a bipartisan probe, and the chairman, if he disagrees with the report, even though all the other members, including members from his own side and party, have signed, will decide that I won't sign. And that becomes the precedence. I think Mr. Speaker needs to make a definite, a definite you know, decision on this one. It gives the direction on this one. But I'm told that the new standing orders also suggest that, look, if all a majority of the members sign and one or two people decide not to sign, the report is carried. Now, in this report, a very interesting point. Let's read the last one. Now, uh, paragraph 116, right? Paragraph 116, that the conspiring to replace the IGP by COP Mensa, Superintendent Asari and Superintendent JB, was political and professional and an act of indiscretion on the part of the officers. COP retired, uh, Mensa is retired um, in the course of the inquiry. And contrary to the regulation 82 of the Police Service Regulations 2012 and Section 17 of the Police Service Act, etc., etc., etc. So now COP says, nobody can bring me back. Now listen to Adam Bona, Dr. Adam Bona, listen to what he said. Dr. Adam Bona is a security analyst. He said, COP must be brought back and dealt with. Listen to him. And so as far as I'm concerned, he committed a crime whilst in service. Right. So you are tried in your in service. And then whatever punishment it is, it is given to you. The reason is that it's supposed to serve as a deterrent for other serving officers who might want to do the same. Or else I would wait if I'm a military officer or police officer or fire or prison. Few months into my retirement, I go and commit armed robbery. Then when I am caught, I go on on uh, retirement, and then the case you're able to die. They will bring you back and try you. So anyone who says that he cannot be brought back, maybe that person doesn't understand the history of security services all over the world. And Ghana is not different. They'll... So this is what Adam Bona has said. Now listen to the response that COP Mensah gave to Adam Bona. Listen. You are calling for your head in terms of bringing you back to the service and trying you and then taking away your benefits because of your conduct while you were in uniform and in office and the tape, the contents of the tape that has been ascertained by the committee. What do you say to them? Uh, who is saying that? Dr. Adam Bonner. I don't, no, no sensible person can say that. No sensible person can make that comment. No sensible. Anybody who makes that comment has to check his brains. He'll be sent to the mental hospital and check his brains. And what will we be looking for in that uh, test? 
asked him, I don't know. Maybe he's not, his brain is not working well. Do you think you conducted yourself well while in office, a very high-ranking police officer, COP, meeting with politicians and and and? Do you think it's easier to be in the police service and, and 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 get to the rank of a commissioner of police? My brother, <laughs> the burden of proof is to be established. It has been established. Will Parliament take the bold decision this time round? Because the Sputnik V uh, scandal probe is still on their table and many other reports. There's a burden also at the doorstep of the president. He has refused to sign many, 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 many things. Will he take a decision on this one? I don't know. I just came to tell you what is happening in Ghana today. Please call me 055 924